significant event on the Earth as far as affecting the geology, the structure, the formation of the Earth was the flood. It seems like the flood must have just caused tremendous upheaval. Uh, when the fountains of the deep were opened up, it seems to have distorted, fractured, lifted up some things, lowered other things, contorted the crust of the earth in almost every conceivable way. One of the questions that you probably would be asked is, we're going to talk about how deep the flood was. The flood covered the mountains of those days. It says 15 cubits high. Do you remember what the cubit was? From about the elbow to the fingertip, which is thought to be about 18 inches or a foot and a half. So if you have the, the mountains covered by 15 cubits, 15 times one and a half is what? 22 and a half feet. 22 and a half feet above the highest hills. That's a lot of water. And of course, for some people, that would be incomprehensible. And that's why they don't believe the story of the flood. Yes, Genesis 7:11 gives two sources for all this water. The first source is when it talks about the fountains of the deep were broken open. This would probably be what we would call geysers, springs, and there's lots of water under the surface of the earth. That's why you can drill wells. So it says all the fountains of the great deep were broken up and got a theory called lake tectonics. It probably just broke up all the, the surface and churned it up. And the world that now is, is different from the world that then was. You know, I've heard people try to draw a map of where you know, the Garden of Eden is, for example. We, you don't know where it is. It was all destroyed. So subterranean geyser springs, volcanoes, earthquakes, and so forth. That's number one source. But where did all the rain come from? It rained for 40 days. The Bible, in the same verse, chapter 7, verse 11, says the windows of heaven were open. And I personally think it was at this time that this vapor canopy that we talked about, that waters above the water, collapsed. Because you would not have rain for 40 days without a more of a source than what we have. If all the rain all over the world, I mean all the clouds would condense and rain, how much water? Two inches. Uh, I've heard some people say as much as seven inches, but two or seven, even seven inches, is nothing compared to 22 and a half feet, which would be 22 and a half times 12. So you're talking about, oh, 40 times just that, but then it also is filling the valleys and so forth. So you're probably talking hundreds of times of water compared to what the rain could. Say. So there had to be a different source, and the Bible gives the answer. Any indications that the whole earth was covered by the flood? Well, I think the Bible definitely teaches that. Expressions like all the high hills and mountains were covered. Doesn't just say some of it. It's interesting the depth of this water. 15 cubits upward. Any idea of why God selected that depth of water? Call what the dimensions of the ark were, how deep the ark was. 30 cubits. So you want to have it high enough, you know, 30 cubits deep, so maybe it floated about halfway. You want to make sure that the bottom of the ark is not going to hit one of these mountains that knocked a big hole in it and have an early Titanic. I got had this all planned. I believe he even measured the amount of water. Another indication the whole earth was covered was, you remember how long it took them to build the ark? 120 years, something like that? If it had been a local flood, what would the people have done? Well, they just moved to a different area. There was a need for an ark, and there would have not been a need if it had been a local flood. And then last but not least is, why did God send the flood? What was the purpose of the flood? Well, it was to destroy all sinful mankind. And if you just had a local flood, the Bible definitely teaches a worldwide flood. The purpose was God was, shall we say, <laughs> almost fed up with humanity, and he was going to destroy all flesh, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord, and of course God's going to destroy. People have problems with a God who punishes, but don't forget, everybody could have got on the ark. There was a way of escape, and God's going to punish the people on this earth, but there's a way of escape. Jesus is the door. Jesus, Jesus is the mercy. Jesus died on the cross so that you don't need to be judged by fire. 
You know, when I read the whole Old Testament, I almost conclude that in, in one sentence. Obey and be blessed, disobey and be punished. That's just about the summary of the, of the whole Old Testament. Genesis 7, 19 through 20 says, The waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth, and all the high hills were under the whole heaven were covered 15 cubits. Verse 20. 15 cubits upward did the waters prevail, and the mountains were covered. What else shows from the Bible? There are at least 30 expressions of universality. Like it says, all flesh died. All the mountains were covered. All in whose nostrils was the breath of life. All, all, all of all that was in dry land died. So, so over and over again, he's emphasizing not just some, but all. Also, even the New Testament, Peter spoke, only eight souls were saved by water. Peter certainly believed in the story of the flood. Everybody else died. The emphasis is only eight souls saved. If it was a local flood, first of all, the ark wouldn't have been necessary, but also if it was a local flood, why build one so big? That was a huge boat. The 1800s, they never built a boat as big as Noah built. And then probably one of the clinchers in Genesis 8, 21, 9, 11, 15, God promised never again to smite every living thing by a flood. If it wasn't worldwide, if it didn't happen, why would God never again do it? In order for God to never again do it, he had to do it the first time. Now, do we have any evidence outside the Bible of such a great flood? Most of the mountains and the earth, the near the summits, they have found marine fossils. Fossils of things like clams and fish. Pray tell me, how could you find a fossil of a fish near the top of a mountain if it wasn't underwater? Florida this spring, and a guy from the church brought some shark's teeth that they had found where they mined for chemicals in central Florida. Well, how did shark's teeth get in the middle of Florida if it hadn't once been underwater? Another evidence is we find billions of fossils. Fossils are the remains of plants and animals that are in the Earth's crust. How do fossils form? Fossils form by a sudden burial. The fact that we find these fossils indicate that there was a worldwide flood. The other thing is, if you've studied geology, there are several types of rocks. There's igneous rocks, that's the rocks that come from volcanoes and stuff like that. Metamorphic rock of the kind that changed from one time to the other. But most of the rock are what are called sedimentary. Do you know what sedimentary means? Sediments, they've been laid down by water. You go and you see all these layers, almost all over the earth, most, by far, the greatest percentage of the rocks are sedimentary, laid by water. And the flood probably is what caused these layering. And I think that would probably almost certainly. Flood legends were all over the world. There are some 200 of them. And if it was worldwide, you would expect stories of people all over the world that their ancestors were involved in the flood, which all came from Mount Ararat. As I mentioned to you, these legends, they vary. You know, they've been handed down from mouth to mouth, and so they vary quite a bit. But there was some uniformity. One of the uniformities is that there was a worldwide flood. It did destroy men and animals. Only a few people were saved, and there was a vessel of safety. Now, you remember, some had canoes, and some had logs, and some of that. But that's because it's been told over and over again. But that originated from people who passed down over and over again these stories. Thank God for the written word that isn't corrupted. 